If you have your Bibles, turn with me to James chapter 1. And I think you're going to see pretty quickly why uh, Brad and I talked and why that was the perfect song that would lead us into this topic of conversation on the pursuit of wisdom. So I want you to do a couple of things for me this morning as you turn into James chapter 1. I want you to take one finger, put it in James chapter 1. I want you to put another finger and put it in 2 Chronicles 1 verse 7. I want you to take another finger and put it in the book of Proverbs, all right? We're going to move around a lot this morning. Uh, you will use your Bible, so if you can get it out, turn it on, be, have it ready. Uh, we're going to use it several times this morning. You may even have to stand up at some point as we read God's Word aloud. Uh, so you, we're going to do this together, all right? Got this. So a lot of, a lot of different places that we're going to look at, but let me start with our chief text this morning, which is James 1, 5 through 8, and then we're just going to navigate through this together. If you have your outline, I encourage you to go ahead and get that out. There's plenty of room for taking notes or writing your grocery list after we get done, either way. I hope that you'd write some notes down and not your grocery list, but all right. So James chapter one, five through eight. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, unstable in all of his ways. Let's pray and ask the Lord's help. Lord, we just thank you for your word. We ask your help as we navigate through these next few moments to, to recognize and hear and receive and repent of where we may be off the mark. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, because you are our rock and our redeemer. We love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. So if you have your finger over in 2 Chronicles, turn over there with me for a moment. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7, you see probably one of the most famous passages of Scripture that deal with wisdom. You've got Solomon, and Solomon is known for his wisdom. He's the wise king, right? And you see in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7, in the night God appeared to Solomon. And he said to Solomon, ask what I shall give you. Let's take a full stop time out for just a moment, right? God has come to Solomon and asked Solomon, what do you want? Now, if God came to you tonight and asked you, what do you want? What would you say? I'm aware we're all in church, so the number one answer I should hear is wisdom. Of course it's wisdom, Mark. We've been here before and that's exactly what I would ask for except I know that you're lying, right? All right, so my task today, I'm, I'm kidding of course, my task today will be to convince you that wisdom is the right answer, right? That's my task today, is to convince you that indeed wisdom is the right answer. Wisdom is the right thing. Wisdom is what you should say. And I hope that as you leave here tonight, if God comes and visits you in the middle of the night and says, what do you want, that you would joyfully say, wisdom. We see, as we just heard the song sung, right, worship is a part, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. And so let us worship, let us bow down, right? We're singing what comes right off the page in Second Chronicles. You see, in that night, God appeared to Solomon. And if you look back, what happened that day that that night God would appear to Solomon? You see, in verses one through six, the title there, Solomon Worships. It says that Solomon brought all of his people together, all of Israel. He spoke to all of Israel, the commanders and the thousands and the hundreds and the judges and the leaders of the household. And it ends in verse six. And Solomon went up from there to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the tent of the meeting. And he offered a thousand burnt offerings to the Lord. I think today, before we even get into the meat of the message, as we look at Solomon, sometimes we just look at Solomon and say, hey, he asked for wisdom Solomon knew what to do. He asked for wisdom from the Lord, and the Lord was so grateful and gracious that he gave it to him. But before Solomon got to that point, what was he doing? He was worshiping. He had come to present his offerings to the Lord, to get into this place that the Lord would even come to him and visit Solomon and say, Solomon, what do you want? Solomon is on his knees at the altar, worshiping the Lord. And so there's something to this that leads us when we worship well, when we give our offerings to the Lord, when we give our best, then we are in a posture to be even wise to ask for the wisdom. And so this morning, let me just ask you this key question before we even begin. If God came and visited you tonight, after we have worshiped well, and he said, Mark, what, what is it that you ask of me? 
And I think if you were honest with yourself and you begin to fill in that blank of what you indeed would ask the Lord for, I think it's right here what Solomon asked, what, what God said and why he was pleased with Solomon. If you keep reading in verse chapter one, verse seven of Second Chronicles, and that night God appeared to Solomon and said, ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said to God, you have shown great and steadfast love to David my father and have made me king in his place. O oh Lord, let your word to David my father be now fulfilled for you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me now wisdom and knowledge to go out and come in before you this people for who can govern this people of yours which is so great. And God answered Solomon because this was in your heart and you have not asked possessions, wealth, honor, or even the life of those that you hate. And have not even asked for long life but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may govern my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. I think in that little conversation with God and Solomon, you can see all the things that so many of us would naturally ask for. Man, I want the, I want the lives of my enemies, and my enemies could just be eradicated off the face of the planet. Some of us would ask for possessions. Man, if I could just have this or this or this, if I could have honor and be esteemed amongst all people, if I could have wealth and possessions beyond anything the eye has seen, then I'll have it. But God recognizes that wisdom is the good and right and holy pursuit. And so he just lavishes it on to Solomon. So this morning, again, I tell you, my task, my tall task is to say, when you are to leave this place, that I pray that you are petitioning the Lord often, regularly for wisdom. That if the Lord were to come to you right now and say, what do you want? That you would say, wisdom, beyond anything else, wisdom, I want wisdom. Lord, would you give me your wisdom? So with that, If you will turn in your Bibles, flip over to Proverbs chapter three, 13 through 26. And and if you would, I just want you to stand up. It's a large passage of scripture. If you would, stand with me, and I wanna read this aloud with us. And if you have your copy of God's word, would you have it open, maybe on your phone or on your uh, your paper? If you would just open it up. And I wanna read this, and I wanna stop a couple of times, because there's a lot of important things here. All right, Proverbs chapter three, 13 through 26. Again. As as I begin to explore what is wisdom, how can I encourage you to seek after wisdom, what I found was the Bible gives the best answer that I could possibly give you. I mean, I was trying to come up with great points and great things to say, but the Bible is the best source of why you should seek wisdom. So a couple times we're gonna do this. Proverbs chapter three, 13 through 26. In your Bible, maybe just look look along with your finger pointed to where I am so you can see that I'm not making this stuff up. It's right here in God's word. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom. From Proverbs 3, 13 through 26. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom. And blessed is the one who gets understanding for the gain from her is better than gain from silver and her profit is better than of gold. You understand that this is better than any investment that we can make in the stock market, better than anything that we could search or seek for. Wisdom is the thing that is better than gold and silver. She is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire can compare with her. Nothing that you would desire could compare with wisdom. Long life is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who hold on to her. Those who hold her fast are called blessed. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge the deeps broke open and the clouds dropped down their dew. My son, do not lose sight of these. Keep sound wisdom and discretion and they will be life for your soul and adornment for your neck. Then you will walk on your way securely and your foot will not stumble. If you lie down, you will not be afraid, and when you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror or the ruin of the wicked when it comes, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. There's wisdom. You can have a seat as we continue. Proverbs 16, 16 reminds us how much better to get wisdom than gold, to get understanding is better to be chosen than silver. And you can see the Bible over and over repeats back on itself why wisdom is such a good pursuit. 
why it is wise for us to seek after it, to search for it, to long for it, to ask for it, to beg for it, because it is so good for our souls. And so, as we go back to James chapter one, let's follow on our outline. Number one, let's recognize when we're lacking and let's go to the source. Now, if we wanna look at what we're talking about in context, you'll see James chapter one, what we looked at last week, one through four, reminds us, consider it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. All right, remember that last week we talked about trials of various kinds to consider it all joy and then it continues to remind us and, and these things produce steadfastness. Let steadfastness have their full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And it's interesting that James would go from perfect and complete, lacking in nothing to verse five that he would say, if any of you lacks wisdom. It's like these two verses are congruent with one another that he's reminding us in the midst of trials, it's likely that you're going to lack wisdom and so you're gonna need to ask and pull in for it. But it's not just when we go through temptations or trials that we ask for wisdom. This is across the board, no matter what we face, no matter what you're walking through, wisdom is a good pursuit. I don't know if when you go to the gas station, if you're one of the people that holds on to the, the nozzle the whole time to fill up your gas, or if you're one of the kind that use the little silver thing that you push down and it fills it up until it clicks. I don't know if you're, you got two camps, right? Two camps, either you're the person that pushes it down and you just go about your merry way, or you're one of those people that cannot leave the gas pump because the little sign says, do not leave the pump unattended, right? Two people in the world, those are it, all right? You know when you reach the top of your gas tank, the thing just clicks in and the gas shuts off because your gas tank is full, right? Dumb analogy, but there is no point in your life where the, the nozzle of wisdom should be shut off because you've got enough. There's no point that you say, you know what, I'm good. I've made it, I'm wise enough, I've made it to the top, you can shut that wisdom tank off because I am now wise enough, henceforth I shall go. It doesn't happen. So across this room, whether you're facing trials of various kinds or whether you're walking through a great joy in life, there's no point that you say, you know what? Lord, thank you for this abundant wisdom you've given me. I need no more of it. If you get to that place, friends, I would encourage you to get down on your knees because you ain't there yet. We recognize when we're lacking and we go to the source. Can I tell you that I think one of our problems here in this world is that we don't recognize when we are lacking wisdom. We hold on to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your pathway straight. Be wise not in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn from evil. But I'm afraid too often we feel wise in our own eyes to do most of the things that we feel like we're supposed to accomplish. And so it's only when things get so overwhelming, it's when things get so heavy in our lives that then we say, hold on, where's that verse in James chapter one? I need wisdom, so let me go ask for it. Now wisdom is available to us at every moment of every day, through every circumstance and every trial and every joy and every sorrow. Wisdom is right there ready for us, but so often we don't recognize that we're lacking it. And so we don't search for it. We don't seek after it. We recognize when we're lacking and we go to the source of it. James tells us, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask, who? God. And I'm not trying to oversimplify, I'm not trying to make this overly simple, but it is. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. And I say that because I know so often, many of us, when we face trials of various kinds and we're going through difficulty, we, we seek wisdom and so we go out and ask hundreds of different people or we're good at asking Google, but we're not asking God. We go seek after books and resources and people and we go try to amalgamate all the wisdom that we can before we go and ask the source of all wisdom for it. And that doesn't mean that God's people can't provide God's wisdom. It doesn't mean books and resources and even Google at times can provide very good godly wisdom. But why would we not first and foremost go to the source of all wisdom? And the Bible makes it clear, if any of you lacks wisdom, don't ask God. Ask 
We seek after it in a thousand different places for what we face, but look at it. Go to the source and ask God for his wisdom. So then we bring up the second question, what is godly wisdom? I've given you a little space on your outline there. What is godly wisdom? I'm gonna give you a terrible, ugly definition, okay? So if you have a pen, you can try to write this down, but I recognize it's not my best, okay? I've amalgamated from several sources, so I'm sorry. Godly wisdom is God-given, God-centered discernment regarding practically following the way and the word of the Lord. That's squarely, I'm sorry. God-given, God-centered discernment regarding practically following the way and the word of the Lord. How that means fleshed out is that wisdom is taking the knowledge that you know from the Lord, the knowledge that you know from studying God's word and practically applying it to your life to seek after righteousness and following the word and the way of the Lord. It's putting practicality to what it means to live out the gospel in your lives and homes and families. Godly wisdom is where you trust in the Lord and lead not on your own understanding. Godly wisdom is being able to determine what is my next right step of obedience in a life that feels very muddy and confusing. Godly wisdom is taking the knowledge that you have and discerning what is the way I should walk in it. Now, I'm gonna ask you to do me one more favor. I'm gonna ask you to stand up again because we're gonna read another chunk of scripture. When you leave here today and people ask you, how was the service today, you can't say that I didn't move you, right? All right, so a lot of up and down today. Proverbs 2, 1 through 15. Proverbs 2, 1 through 15. Now, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to put your finger right here, right? Because what is wisdom? The Bible's going to give us wisdom. Why do we need it? The Bible's going to give us why we need it. It's all over the pages, right? James is the New Testament proverb, so let's go back to the Proverbs and see why do we need it. Proverbs 2, 1 through 15, my son... If you receive my words, Proverbs 2, 1 through 15, my son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments within you, make your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the path of justice and watching over the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity, every good path for wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will watch over you. Understanding will guard you, delivering you from the way of evil, from men of perverted speech who forsake the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perverseness of evil, men whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. You can be seated. You see again, what is godly wisdom? It protects you, it allows you to see what is righteous and what is good. It allows you to see enemy's ways. It allows you to see the sober-mindedness of the enemy who comes to seek to steal, kill, and destroy. Wisdom guards your heart. Wisdom helps you to understand what is good and right. Wisdom is a shield about you to walk in integrity. Wisdom is good for your soul. And as you search after it, the Bible echoes James and Proverbs and says, God willingly gives it. So then how does God give wisdom? How does God give us wisdom? Well, I don't want to be cute here, but I just want to go back to the text. Number one, God gives wisdom. Number one, generously. You see right here in verse five, let him ask God who gives generously. This is how God wants to give us wisdom, generously. I know many of you, after we get done with church, we'll go eat a, a wonderful lunch somewhere, or maybe you'll go to the house and you'll, you'll come to the end of your meal, and some of you in this room will open up a big old gallon of ice cream. It's a hot day, nothing like it. Now, if somebody is serving you ice cream and you're watching, I hope no matter what they do, you will thank them, 
But some of you will have in your heart that as they scoop that ice cream, you're praying, would they put that ice cream on liberally and generously, right? You're, you're, as they're scooping it, you're thinking, man, I want that big scoop, right? And you're wanting them to scoop liberally so as they heap it onto your plate, it is a heaping pile of ice cream, right? When you go to the store, you go to the ice cream shop and they're, they're reaching their hand into that big drum, you're watching to see when they pull it out from that big drum, is it gonna be a big old scoop or are you gonna have to ask for a double scoop, right? Because you want a generous, healthy scoop of ice cream. In the same way, James tells us that this is how God gives, he gives heaping, liberal, not in the political sense, but in the sense of generous and gracious, just huge scoops of wisdom for us. This is how he wants to give us, not not looking at it saying, man, you can just use a little bit right here, I'll give you a tablespoon. No, he's like, take the pot of wisdom, it's yours, please come and get it. it. It's at times like that, God has set this massive banquet table of wisdom and he is ringing the dinner bell saying, come and get it. And we're outside feasting on mud pies, not understanding what we're missing at the table. God wants to give generously. And how good is that for us? That this is a good pursuit. He wants us to have it and he's not gonna withhold it from us. He's gonna give it to us generously, liberally. He wants us to have it. You see his joy in Solomon saying, ask for it. He wants us to have it. So why we would stay outside while he's ringing the dinner bell, eating mud pies and saying, come and get this feast of wisdom that's in front of you. And even better, he wants to give generously, And I know you may be sitting here today and you may say, well, Mark, that's good and all, but I have squandered so much wisdom in my life. Who am I to come before the God of all gods and ask for wisdom? I mean, my my story is full of mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. My story is full of mess up after mess up after mess up. Even now, I'm in a mess. Why would God give me wisdom? I mean, I'm a mess up. All I've done is mess up. My life is in shambles. It's a mess. Why would God give me wisdom? I don't deserve wisdom. I don't deserve anything from God. He doesn't. Why would God give me wisdom? Well, in my flesh, I feel the exact same way. There are times in my own flesh that I come to this and say, man, I, why, why would, I mean, I've messed up too many times. I've gone and sought out, sought out too many other things. But let me read you what the text tells us. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach. God gives wisdom generously, number one, and number two, without finding fault. And I want you to pull in really close because this is, this is deeply important. That no, I know at times we come to God's throne and we we say, God, I I need grace. And we think I'm not worthy of grace. God, why would you love a sinner such as I? And we walk through how God does. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we come to wisdom and we say, we think that God looks at us and says, you know what? You've had a bad week. I'm just going to scoop over a little bit here. Take a little of this. Oh man, you, you, oh man, you don't, you have messed up here. Just, you know what? Here's, here's a little, just take a little bit of it. Just, you don't, you don't deserve that. At times we think that, man, God's giving wisdom to the, the big dogs, right? The big guys who have big decisions to make. And he's giving it to the, the big people who have a lot of big stuff going on. And he probably doesn't have much of the wisdom barrel left for me. But if you are in Christ, if you are doing what we see in Scripture, that you're searching and seeking after it, he wants to give his wisdom to you generously and without finding fault in you. I can't tell you how reassuring that is for each of us. That we know that God has given us this great gift of wisdom. And he says, search for it, seek after it, meaning that every day in our lives, I would encourage you to seek after it, run after it, long for it. 
Ask, beg, seek, petition, look for it, ask for it, go after it. God, I need your wisdom, Lord, to be a, a husband, a father, to be all that you've called me to be. Lord, I need your wisdom today. And it's not a one-off ask that you do in the morning and you forget about it. You're seeking after his wisdom for all the things in your life. You see on the bottom of your outline, the final blank that I want you to see is a continuation, Matthew 7. Ask, ask and it will give, be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. As I step back and look at my notes and I just read Proverbs chapter three and Proverbs chapter two. Proverbs three, five and six are some of the highlight points of scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And I can tell you there's a lot of points in my life where I can recite that scripture and say that scripture with the best of them. Man, I can pop off, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on your understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your pathway straight. I can knock it off super easy. But I, I gotta confess at times, it's far easier to say, well, my knowledge is pretty good. I got some things going on. Rather than before decisions, getting before the Lord and saying, Lord, would you help me to seek after you? Lord, I need your wisdom and I don't wanna trust in my own inclinations and my own flesh but I wanna trust in you with my heart and lean on my own understanding, but Lord, I want to seek your wisdom. When you see the fruit of it in Proverbs 3 and Proverbs 2, that wisdom is for our peace, it's for our good, it's for our thriving. It helps us in the shadows of the valley of the shadow of death and the mountaintops of joy. It helps us through everything that we face. And we see that God wants to give generously, favorably, without finding fault in us. I pray that we go after it with all that we've got. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you. Lord, I recognize today that I continually need more of your wisdom. I haven't tapped out of needing from your abundant supply of wisdom. So Lord, across this room, I know that there are brothers and sisters who need wisdom. And right now, I just wanna pause right now and just before we have a time of invitation, uh, in the quietness and the stillness of this room, I wanna pray for brothers and sisters who need your wisdom. Lord, would you fill them up? Lord, would you give them tangible evidence of your wisdom on them? Would they see your wisdom? Would they know your wisdom? Lord, would they rest in your wisdom? For those that need discernment as they make decisions, Lord, would they be discerning and wise as they seek your will and your way? For those who are coming to forks in the road for jobs and families and different things, Lord, would you give them immense discernment and would they seek after it more than, than jewels and money and possessions? Lord, would you give us the wisdom to chase after your wisdom. But we live in a, a world that so often will make good things or bad things look wise. So would you help us to be discerning as we walk in this world that we're in, where we love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen.